I remember stepping off the bus with my, with my buddies. And I can remember being very young and being with my father and just being awestruck. We looked around, here's this silver spaceship driving in. Among this whole sea of cars on the road, here was this thing coming down the road that just looked like nothing else. The one that sticks out in my head would have been the C4 Grand Sport. And it was a white uh, C4 convertible. It was a C5 Corvette, bright yellow. It, it's this awe-aspiring vehicle. It's an attainable vehicle, but it's also something that is born out of pure function. And quite frankly, by the time you get to eight, it's the full embodiment of what that is. Over the course of my career, I've been involved with Corvette on one level or another, probably from my first day of becoming part of the Corvette team, all the way to the current 2020 Stingray. I became the uh, director of design for Corvette for the sixth generation. And during, during the development of each of those, there were probably a few significant key design elements. Those are the heritage of Corvette. What are those elements throughout the years, whether it's proportion, surface, graphics, that you can identify and then distill down to their basic elements in a timeless way. Like for instance, the, the fender shapes, the profile, the proportion really is, is big. We have this canopy on a lower fuselage like a jet fighter. That's probably the second element is aircraft have been inspirational. And why is that? Because they're usually high performance, they're, they're purpose driven, there's a singular mission for them, and it relates to Corvette beautifully. Another aspect is racing. Raciness has had a huge influence on Corvette, and particularly, the, obviously, the, this last 2020 uh, Stingray is a culmination of all that experience. Well, the character that you see of the car, the design, is influenced by the functional aspects of the race vehicles. We kind of had that innate history of what's coming from of the past two generations for sure and now three. My point is, is that you see this level of function and continue to grow and grow. And then you get back into the racing program at the same time then. And you see that where the track starts to become the inspiration for, for the regular man. And then, I think that's always been a beautiful part about Corvette is that we're going to the track with this, we're doing our best to win. Obviously it's a shift in where we've placed a motor but the reality is, is what caused that shift was what you saw grow from four to five to six to seven. We peaked out where we were at and it was time to move on. And I remember clearly Tad Schechter, the chief engineer saying, you know, we've optimized this platform as much as we possibly can. Now it's time to go to mid-engine. The move of a Corvette from front to mid-engine, you could call it a risk, but for us uh, inside of Design Center, it was something that's always been beneath the surface. And it's something that just never quite made it out of the gate. And since I've worked at GM, there were mid-engine Corvettes around. For the past 60 years, uh, since Zora Arcus Duntoff was trying to make a mid-engine Corvette, there were many, many iterations. We've always researched and experimented and developed concepts around mid-engine proportion. 
So it's almost like no wine before it's time because it has been tried for years. It'd probably be like in a 2011-ish time frame where we started uh, talking about the mid-engine again. We started having meetings as to what we would do with the package, uh, what would we need for content, and that's we started scripting uh, what we would like to, the mid-engine car to do at that time. As a designer, you don't often get to work on something that's new essentially from ground up. And this car is new from ground up. We had three full-size models, clay models, uh, with a different theme on each side. We probably had at least 12 scale models. You know, a scale model we would develop uh, for two weeks and decide, you know, was there merit to the design? If it didn't have merit, then we would just drop that scale. So we were constantly, you know, churning and uh, reworking scales as we were looking for, for a lot of themes in that. By moving to the mid-engine layout, what that enabled as far as from a performance figures, as far as interior layout and visibility, going from the, the C7 Corvette to the C8, the seventh generation Corvette had kind of that arc of driver controls in front of you. And now we were taking it and literally kind of turning it on its side and making it really this three-dimensional thing that you were sitting in. The difference of how extreme, how, how much lower the IP is, how much richer all the materials are, how much uh, more sculptural and three-dimensional the interior space is. I think that's gonna be a really uh, big takeaway and something that a lot of people aren't gonna be expecting when they get inside of it. If you jump from a current Corvette C7 to the C8, the experience that the customer's gonna get, when you start adding that all together, it's hard to, to look at a going to a mid-engine configuration as a risk. Um, it's gonna take all those things that the front engine car did and just take them to the next level. So if I have to sum the whole thing up, I'm most proud that we are able to achieve everything that we set out to do. But what I actually think the greatest success was is that as you get in it and you use it, you don't really notice that you're doing something different. It feels intuitive. It feels like you're a part of the car. It feels like the right decision. It, it's delivering something that would usually be almost seen as something so exotic or unattainable. It makes it where this experience can be yours. It's, it makes it to a much higher volume of people that can actually have something and, and get behind the wheel and drive something uh, that's gonna feel completely like forbidden fruit, right? It's like, oh, you would have never thought you could get a car like that. Although we all feel a sense of accomplishment for, you know, finally, this was the right time to introduce, to work on and introduce a mid-engine Corvette. But I'm here to tell you that that is just the tip of the iceberg. Just imagine where it can go from this point. This is just the beginning.